Hope you like MLB totals because I've got four of them today. One on the big TV game. As a reminder, you can always smash that like button if you are in agreement with these. I'll be closing out today's Power 5 with a college football future. But let's get the Power 5 rolling with some of those MLB totals starting with Red Sox Astros over eight. I have concerns about this Boston pitching staff right now, and rightfully so. Tonight's starter, Tanner Houck, he's not been good since the All-Star break. In fact, the Red Sox have lost his last five starts with all five of those opponents scoring at least seven runs. Go back a little further. Houck, you look at the numbers, they're not good. 4.98 ERA his last eight starts. He's allowed an average of 4.6 walks and 1.5 home runs per nine innings. He's allowed at least three runs in eight of his last 11 starts. Meanwhile, the Boston bullpen, worst ERA in all of baseball since July 1st, uh, 6.45. As a staff, the Red Sox have allowed by far the most home runs since the break. We're talking 54 total in the last 25 games. That is 12 more than the next worst team. So, Going into Houston does not seem ideal. The Astros top 10 at home in both slugging and runs scored. They scored 23 runs in a three-game sweep of the Red Sox at Fenway last week. So uh, I realize I've made quite the case to bet the Astros on Monday. And I haven't even mentioned that Yusei Kikuchi is starting for them. Uh, In three starts, it's coming over in a trade with Toronto. Kikuchi's allowed two earned runs or less every time. However, it's a small sample. And he still has a 6.23 ERA over his last 13 starts. Does Kikuchi, he's allowed nearly two home runs per nine innings during that time. And this Red Sox lineup, I'm not as concerned about it as I'm concerned about the pitching staff. As a matter of fact, the Red Sox lineup, number two in the American League in home runs hit per game since the break. And they're number one in runs per game, 6.1. Do not be surprised then if Kikuchi struggles a bit on the mound tonight. I like the over eight in Boston-Houston. Number two, It's an interleague heavy slate on Monday, so let's get the first of three such matchups. Baltimore at the Mets. No hawk to a girl throwing out the first pitch, but I can't say Trevor Rogers of Baltimore has been much better than her uh, since coming over at the trade deadline. Three starts, 13 runs allowed in 14 of the third innings. Same number of walks as strikeouts. Eight, that's never good. Rogers is now 2-11 on the year, guys. 4.89 ERA, 1.57 whip. Given how he's looked since coming over, it's fair to say you can't pin that poor one loss record all on the fact he was pitching for Miami to start the season. Then you got David Peterson going for the Mets. I have been through this before and I'm going to die on this hill. He is one of the biggest overachievers in all of baseball when it comes to starting pitchers. Fourth largest gap between actual and expected ERA this season. He is... Actual ERA is 3.04. It sounds very good, but as expected ERA, more than two full points higher, guys. 5.31. Baltimore could score on the road. We know this. Number two in runs per game away from home at 5.27. Don't like either of these two bullpens, so over eight and a half is how I'd play this one. Number three, let's keep the over train going with Twins Padres. This should be a great series. You can watch tonight's opener on FS1. This is the TV game I referenced at the top. And considering we don't have what I would term an elite starting pitcher on the mound, seven seems like a very low total to me. I know Petco is a pitcher-friendly ballpark, as you do. However, both of these teams average 4.8 runs per game. Zebby Matthews, Mark Zinno's favorite name, Zebby, uh, Zebby's making just his second big league start for the Twins. So you don't really know what you're going to get with him. He did a good job against the Royals last week in his debut. But the Royals are a weak hitting lineup on the road. Remember, I actually backed the Twins over their team total in that game, uh, which cashed quite easily. Now, Michael King is starting for the Padres here. He, too, has been facing a lot of weak lineups uh, recently. Team is 6-1 and his last seven starts, and and the opponent uh, has played a big role in that. But I just don't think this starting pitching matchup, guys, justifies such a low total. I'll buy both offenses after they underperformed over the weekend. Over seven in Twins Padres. Now for an under. Mariners Dodgers. Brian Wu has been outstanding for Seattle. 1.48 ERA his last five starts. Just six runs allowed. One of them unearned in 30 and a third innings. Dodgers have never faced him before. That's Usually an edge to the pitcher, obviously. Uh, On the flip side, the Mariners can't hit. 
That's generally a problem when you're playing baseball. Uh, now, the Mariners did hit Sunday, scoring 10 runs. Everybody in the lineup got hit, as a matter of fact. But that was a situation. They were facing a terrible starter, Woodford, for Pittsburgh. Gavin Stone, he's not terrible. Uh, he's starting tonight for the Dodgers. I don't think he's going to have much of an issue facing what has been the fourth lowest scoring lineup in all of baseball. So under eight and a half, it is here. Before I round out today's Power 5 with a college football future, I do want to remind you, you can still get that 7-day all-access pass for only $69 at wagertalk.com. This is basically like getting four days free, guys. Normally, a 3-day all-access would cost you $69. I won my lone MLB play over the weekend. Nice comeback, Texas. And what was most definitely a very disappointing start to soccer, still 33-17-3, last 53 on the pitch, number one last season in net units in EPL, La Liga, and Serie A. All right, final piece of business today is a college football future, like I said, and it's one that's going to raise some eyebrows. I'm taking Texas A&M plus 200 to make the college football playoff. Yes, the Aggies have been perennial underachievers, but thankfully... Jimbo Fisher and his antiquated approach to the game is gone out of here from College Station. In steps Mike Elko, did a great job at Duke last year. He knows AM well. Here's the thing I believe the SEC is likely to get four, at least four, college football playoff spots. Georgia, a lock for one of them, no doubt about it. Most will say Texas and Alabama are likely to get in as well. Though I've got Texas taking a step back from last year, and Bama. Now a less certain commodity in the post-Nick Saban world. I'm lower on the market than Ole Miss, uh, on Ole Miss than most people. Uh, they were a bit, the Rebels were a bit lucky last year. And LSU, their defense, I'm lower on them as well than most because their defense is bad uh, down in Bat Baton Rouge. So somebody's got to step up and be a dark horse in this league. And I think it's going to be A&M. Their two toughest regular season games are the opener, versus Notre Dame, and the finale versus Texas. If they can split those, the Aggies are making the college football playoff because I've got them winning every game in between. I'll say this. If you're skeptical that they can beat Notre Dame in the opener, for the record, the markets come in on the Aggies for that game, then wait until after because you'll get a better price on this future if they lose the opener. But the bottom line, for me, I think a and is going 11-1 and this year and making the college football playoff. That is my hot take at least uh, up until this point for 2024 college football. Let's now recap today's Power 5. We started off number one, over eight in Red Sox Astros. Number two, over eight and a half Orioles Mets. Number three, over seven Twins Padres. Number four, under eight and a half Mariners Dodgers. And number five, Texas A&M plus 200 to make the college football playoff. You can let me know what you think of those selections by commenting down below. Also, please comment with your favorite selections for Major League Baseball on Monday and your favorite college football futures as well. By the way, I've got a 5% college football win total available at wagertalk.com right now uh, at my page, wt.buzz slash bp. Head over there, grab it right now. This is easily my favorite win total, which is why I've made it a max bet. Since December of 2022, I'm hitting 70% with 5% college football plays. So one more time, wt.buzz slash bp is the only place to get it. Uh, get it before the line moves. And if you're not already subscribed to the Wage Talk YouTube channel, what are you waiting for? Uh, tons of great exclusive sports betting content each and every day covering you in all sports. Not only do I drop the Power 5 daily, but you can't forget about the morning wager with myself and my good buddy Mark Zinno every Monday through Friday. And if you haven't smashed that like button already, do so now. We always appreciate the support. Until next time, let's cash some tickets. Have a good day, everybody.